G'day folks, Andy here from McDowell Manor. G'day, so it's stinking hot today, so I've decided um, that I'll do some filming inside. And I was tagged by Rob Bob, um, also called Bits Out the Back. Um, and I call him that hairy git from out of Ipswich Way. Um, so I've got the allotment challenge. So we'll have a little go at that. Um, I'm going to give me a chance to do something I don't normally do, which is talk about myself. So the first two questions I'm going to answer together. How long have I had my allotment for? And how long did I wait? Um, well, I've had this current yard and house for eight years. Um, I waited probably six years, almost six years, before I got into gardening. Um, and then I got into it in a very big way. Um, I, got, I decided that I really did love all those old-fashioned artisan skills, making bread, making cheese, making your own alcohols, jams, preserves. So I really got into a lot of that stuff in a big way and the gardening came along at the same time. Uh, where did I learn about gardening? Well, mostly, to be honest, I learned about gardening from YouTube and there's an awful lot of good information on YouTube, as you all know, um, and a little website called Brisbane Local Food, uh, which is a great little website that I help administer. Um, do I plant a winter garden? Well, kind of. Um, Rob said it as well. We don't really have seasons here in, in Brisbane. Um, but the one thing I do look forward to for winter is being able to grow some proper lettuces. Can't grow them in summer. They just bolt and go to seed. Um, so I do enjoy getting good lettuce in winter. Uh, what's been my biggest success this year or ever? Um, it's got to be Kangkong which I really love. I've never even heard of Kangkong. Um, really love this stuff. Uh, it's a spinach, Chinese water spinach. Grows in my aquaponics really well. Um, it's a great producer, although it does die back in winter. Um, so when I've got the Kangkong in summer in place of the lettuces, in winter I've got the lettuces in place of the Kangkong, which works out pretty well. What's been my biggest gardening disaster? Well, Part of the logic I applied when I started running my YouTube channel was I wanted the people to be able to see that, look, any idiot can do this stuff. And trust me, if I can do it, you guys can well and truly do it. Um, so one of the things I was always quite careful to do was I wanted you to see my mistakes as well as my successes. Uh, so anyone who watches my YouTube channel will know that one of my greatest catastrophes ever was what I called the tankastrophe. Uh, what happened was we had some really heavy downpours over about a week and a bit, I think. Uh, and I didn't have an overflow in the aquaponics. And eventually, with all the weight of that water, it just blew the entire front, front side out of my aquaponics tank. Now, I was very lucky. Um, I didn't lose any fish. But, Jesus, it was a lot of work putting that bloody thing back together. Um, that was a shocker. Um, and the other thing that was a shocker was, if you watch my channel, as you see, I had the crinkled corn um, and cherry tomatoes that tasted so damn awful I couldn't eat them. Well, it turns out that, that what that taught me um, was that as organic matter breaks down, um, it'll eventually produce a lot of nitrogen. But in the early st process, in the early stages, uh, it steals nitrogen like, the, like there's no tomorrow. And so what happened was those new beds that I'd built across the centre of the yard between the arbour, they were completely and utterly nitrogen deficient. As soon as I started adding some organic blood and bone, um, guess what? The problems all went away. Surprise, surprise. Um, so yeah, like I say, the thing for me is I like to show you my mistakes as well as my failures, um, and that's how I learn. You know, that teaches me more than a success, to be honest. Um, no, I just, can I go back to that biggest success ever? Uh, I mentioned the Kang Kong. I can't remember if I mentioned the passion fruit. Now, I don't even eat passion fruit. Rosie eats passion fruit. 
But let me tell you, that bloody thing produces and produces and produces like there's no tomorrow. It's a, it's a ripper. Um, passion fruit's are pretty expensive over here. We can pay two bucks for a bloody passion fruit. Um, so it's good to have a lot of passion fruit. Rosie loves them. All right, back to what we know, back to the, your regularly scheduled program. Um, have you a tried and true variety of crop that you will always grow? Uh, well, not so much as a, as a variety per se, but there's crops that I will always grow. So I've mentioned the Kong um, sweet potatoes are a great crop for me. Um, not particularly because I, if I get a tuber, it's a bonus. Um, what I grow sweet potato for is the leaves and you've probably seen, or you could see if you wished, um, I make pesto out of it. Um, so it's a really useful plant, the old sweet potato. I grow a lot of chilies. I make my own homemade chili jam, sweet chili jam to a Thai style. Um, and you can see there's a video on that as well. And I also grow a lot of cherry tomatoes. Um, although when I had those really bitter ones, I was starting to question whether I'd ever grow them again. Um, are you planning on trying anything new next year? I try to do a few new things as often as I can. Um, so for example, at the moment I'm growing a little thing called a Brahmi mental herb, I think it is, and Lebanese watercress. Um, so I'll let you know how they go, they're growing all right. So um, how do you preserve a lot of your, uh, your crops? Well, like I've said, sometimes I'll make jams and sauces, do lots of pesto. Pesto is a very popular dish over here. Um, I've started to use it to make crops to make a lot of wines. Um, and you will probably have seen there's some videos on that too. So I make a kumquat beer because I have a lot of kumquats out the front. They're another really good producer for me. And if you've ever made kumquat marmalade, let me tell you, there's nothing more boring than cutting up hundreds of damn kumquats and picking out the seeds. Um, I make a lot of liqueurs from my crops. Um, so I do what I call a kumquat cello, which is a variant of the lemon cello. Uh, let me tell you, with my friends and family, that one is an extremely, extremely popular little number. Um, yeah, that's probably it. You know, I, t I t kind of, like I say, I really value those artisan skills. Um, sausage making is another one that I do that I forgot to mention. I make cheese, in fact I teach cheese making. Um, I've got a video on how to make bread, uh, a bit of stuff like that. Probably worth a look through there folks. Uh, what's finally, what's my favourite meal to cook with veggies from the plot? I guess my favourite would be ones where I can construct a whole meal straight from the yard. Um, so that's things like quiche and salad. I've got the chickens, I've got the eggs, um, the salad greens all come out of the yard, you know, it, I find that entirely fulfilling. Um, that was one of my aims, was to try and lower our food costs, um, eat organically, know where my produce comes from, eliminate the food miles from the whole business, um, you know, and it's so beautiful and fresh, like you just, you can't beat it. Um, even the turmeric, you know, I was grinding up some turmeric this morning that I had in the freezer. Now, I've had a year's supply of that stuff, you know. It's great. I know no chemicals were put on it. I know exactly how it was produced. And in terms of food miles, you're looking at three steps. <laughs> on sled straight out the back door. Um, I also like that I can do things now like have fish and salad. Uh, you know, I grow the perch. so. The boys are at the stage where they're well and truly eating size now. Uh, they're two years old. Um, so that's great. We're going to start to have a lot more of them. Just, um, I'm just waiting till probably after Christmas because you get the fingerlings over here in January. So as I eat the big boys down, I'll be able to replace the fingerlings. Um, and if you look through the videos, I've also done one on a crazy hairbrain scheme I've got where I've... Um, I've built a screen that you can move up and down the tank. That will help me when it's time to harvest. I move it down and restrict the fish all in one small area. Uh, makes it easy to get them out. Um, when I'm not harvesting, I can give them a lot more room and I know the fingerlings are pretty safe, or at least they've got somewhere to run away um, on the other side of that screen. 
Now, I'm not actually worried about the big boys eating the little fingerlings. I'm worried about the fingerlings getting access to food because those big boys are voracious eaters, let me tell you. Um, so that was my allotment challenge. Um, hopefully that sort of gave you a little bit more information on me. Um, I went looking for two, two people to pass the joy, the love on to in terms of the challenges. Um, everybody's done this thing that I know. Um, so I've found good old Retro over in the States, so I'll put a link to his site down below. Um, if I was doing a, if I was mimicking you, Rob Bob, I'd be saying, I'll do a link down below. Um, oh, I might show you just before I go, what I'll show you, uh, since the Christmas tree is behind me, we'll spread a bit of Christmas love, hey? What I'll show you is my Rosie's present. For Christmas, and here it is, this lovely little ball of fluff. His name's Benny, and as you know, my other dog, who's run away for some reason right at this point in time, um, his name is Bobby, so now we've got Bob and Ben. <laughs> All right, well, if I don't see you before Christmas, um, I hope everybody out there in YouTube land has a wonderful and safe Christmas. Please stay safe, folks. Um, I know especially with people drinking and stuff, there's a road accidents and all sorts of stuff. Um, my, my wish for you is you have a great new year and you stay safe and happy over Christmas. Alright folks, we'll um, catch up next time. So from little Benny, wave Benny, say bye, bye, bye everybody. See you folks. I don't want to be on TV dad. Stuff you I'm going to eat your questions so you can never put me on TV again. Daddy.